Pokemon names are really important to their design, obviously. You can't have a cute little monster and not give it a name, type null. What is that? It's not a name. In the anime, the name is often the first thing you hear when a new mon is introduced, and in the games, you run into a new mon, and you get a look at them, and you get to see their name, and hopefully that name will help you understand something about them. Charizard, I mean, look at it. It's a lizard that chars things. Probably fire type. Hypno, oh, look at this guy. I bet it learns hypnosis with that hypnosis thing that it does, and that's why it's named Hypno. Oh, I bet Floatzel likes to float on the water. It's a water type weasel. Shroomish. It's kind of, it's kind of be a mushroom. Grass type. Chin Chow. If you had absolutely no Pokemon knowledge and I put a bunch of Pokemon next to each other and asks you to pick out its name, you'd probably be able to get a lot of the Pokemon matched up to their names perfectly, or at least in the same line, or at the very least, the same type. Because they are mostly all pretty good names in that regard. But how about Chin Chow? Hmm thinking about it, it sounds like a Pokemon with a big chin that eats a lot. So my guess would be you. Yes, piranha eat a lot and get a load of that chin. Obviously chin shell. What? No. Oh, well, yes, I do believe I saw it. It's this chinny lardo. Yes, clearly. Round two. Okay, now do the same, but for Rapidash. Oh, well, Rapidash sounds fast. It's rapid and it dashes. So looking at all of these, Ah, uh, yes, it's this speedy thing right here. No, 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 over here, yes, that screams speed. Rapidash is okay, it's pretty mid-tier name-wise, because when you think about it just a bit more, it also has ash in there. It rapidly turns things into ash, so it's a fast fire type. Oh, well in that case I know, it's you! Your hair screams speed and fire, and look at those leggies run! But there is a lot more to a name than just getting what it is across. It could be the most straightforward name ever, like Dugong. It's, it's a dugong. They just spelled it differently. So there's the word dew in it, you know, those water droplets. So like, it, it's not the worst. But seal! Seal is like the worst, second worst. The real name for seals already has a fun pun in there. C-L. They live in the sea and they took that out? I don't see what they did here because this guy has nothing to do with its eyes. Yeah, these names do explain what they are, but they are not very creative and Dugong is barely a portmanteau, which is what most Pokemon names are. A portmanteau is a combination of words to form a new word, like moped, motel, and bromance. And most Pokemon names are just that, and often done in a really smooth and natural way. And names like this are a lot more creative than just like Wolf Kami, Rhino Mon, and Ice Blob and Dodo. Like, come on, Monster Sanctuary, you're such a good game. Why are you like this? And then most of the Digimon are just like, it's what they are, with the word Mon slapped on at the end of it. What I'm getting at here is that I don't think any other creature collector monster taming game has quite mastered their naming schemes quite like Pokemon. But that doesn't mean that Pokemon is free of its stinkers. Gen 1 is especially bad at this, but at least back then it was new and experimental. They barely knew what they were doing as evidenced by uh, trying to play those games. But honestly, I would still expect something better than Golem. Oh, I wonder what it's based on. Maybe a Golem. Like it's not even spelled differently. At least Seal and Dugong were spelled differently. And the name is made even worse by the existence of a newer Pokemon, Golurk, which is like literally a golem itself, but at least it's named better. And Electrode. It's literally a round Electrode. And Crabby. It's a crab. It's like naming your dog Doggy. It's the generic call for dogs you don't know, but a crab. At the very least, they did change the C to a K because it's not literally just a crab. It's a Pokemon. Haunter! Oh, I wonder what it does for a living. Nine Tails! Ah, oh, jeez. And then, people love picking on a lot of the Gen 5 Pokemon, like Sock and Throw. I mean, they're pretty ugly, and their names are just what they do, too. One of them socks you, and the other one throws you. And then, like, Garboder and Trubbish. But those names are totally fine. It's, it's what they are. Trashy rubbish and garbage with an odor. The names sound ugly because they are ugly, like Purr Ugly. Purr Ugly is pretty ugly. And plus, Trubbish and Garboder, those names are so much better than Muck which is just muck, missing the sea. Persian, the pun was right there, Persian. But instead, they just, it's literally a breed of cat that it looks nothing like. Onyx, it's Onyx. Swap the I for a Y and it's a kind of rock. Seeking, uh, hey, hey guy who knows nothing about Pokemon, find Seeking. Seeking, eh? That sounds like something with giant eyes. What could the king of sight be seeking itself? Ah, this. 
This is seeking. And then coughing and wheezing, yeah, it's what they do, but at least that's better than being names like Poison Balloon or something. Go, Poison Balloon! And plus, those names are way better than their original plan, which was Law and Knee of Los Angeles and New York, both very polluted cities with very polluted air. And then Arbok and Ekans. Yeah, they get they get some points for creativity. It, it is just Snake and Cobra backwards, but it sounds cool. Which is our third and final criteria for what makes a good Pokemon. Name. Your name can be punny and a creative portmanteau and get what it is across well, but if it sounds bad to the ears or doesn't roll off the tongue very well, yeah, you get minus points. Think Reggie Ilecki. The Reggies are all legendary Pokemon with names that start with Reggie, which just means royal in Latin, followed by something related to their type. Reggie Steel, Reggie Rock, Reggie Ilecki. E E E. That double E sound. Reggie E Lecky. It doesn't sound good, and it's hard to say for some people, I'm sure. And like, look, I can literally remove just one letter, this E here, and the name sounds so much better. Reggie Lecky. It still has Reggie, and it still sounds like Ilecki, as in electricity. They did the same thing with Regice. It's not Reggie Ice, though that is what it says in the anime. It's Regice. Reggie Lecky sounds way better than Reggie Ilecki. Plus, it sounds a lot cuter, and Reggie Ilecki is the cutest of the Reggies. Diggersby. What? Ugh, I need a break from all these names. Sounds like a good time to tell you about our sponsor, Helix Sleep. Videos like this wouldn't be possible without them, because I need sleep and money. And gosh, my sleep has improved since getting this mattress five years ago, and it's holding up great despite all the weight. And the cooling cover. Oh, I love the cooling cover. My favorite part by far. I sleep best when it's cold all around but warm in the blanket, but it's easy to get overheated when you're a mammal sleeping next to another mammal, and sometimes there's a third mammal. Oh, hello. Nice of you to drop in. Well, my old crummy mattress couldn't breathe or disperse heat well at all, so that was definitely the main thing that got me to switch to the Midnight Lux from Helix. Helix had my wife and I take a quick and easy sleep quiz because they know that everybody sleeps differently and deserves a mattress that fits those differences. And the Midnight Lux was a solid recommendation for us. Comfy. It shipped right to our door all sealed up in a box and we unpacked it and it was great and the whole time I was worry free because I knew they offer a 100 night sleep trial so just in case I decide it's not the perfect mattress for me, they would give me a full refund and come pick it up doubly good because returning a mattress sounds challenging. There's even a 10-year warranty, and they offer flexible financing options. And that's not all, because I've got a link in the description for you, helixsleep.com slash Loxton. You go there, and you can get up to $200 off of your Helix mattress, plus two free pillows. They're so soft and squish, which might be inherent because they are soft, uh, but I, I like them, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, anyway, I've had my relaxation now. Back to the bunny. First of all, it doesn't sound good. Digger's B. It's not a B, it evolves from Bunnel B, and the B at the end of that sounds so much better because it flows. It makes the word bouncy. The word starts with the B sound, and there are no hard sounds in the middle. Bunnel B. It sounds like you're hopping. Bunnel B. Bunnel B. And it's a tunneling bunny, so, you know, it's cute enough. But Digger's B. Ah, those hard G's and the rough R in the middle, followed by a needless B. It's, it's ew. Dupider couldn't be any dupider. Dupider! It's such a strange and unfun transition of syllables. Like, I'd have taken do spider over it. It's, it's literally just the two words next to each other, but at least that sounds better. Or how about doopidoo? That doesn't sound nearly as stupid. It's fun. No more ending with dur. Doopidoo flows better. Fitting of a water type, especially one with lots of repetition in its designs and in its webs, because it's a spider. Emolga. So the fun thing here is that all of the Pikachu clones do stick with their original Japanese names of the Pokemon rather than translating and localizing them. And this works really well because it keeps them sounding cute. Detene! Pichu! Pachuritsu! Emoga! Ew! It sounds more like it belongs in the ground rather than being in the air as a flying squirrel. It's too rough and tumble. It sounds like a disease even. That's not cute. Zororork? Zorua? Zororx? How do I even say these? That's so difficult difficult to roll off the tongue for me, so I wonder how much harder it is for people with different accents. Amora and Auroras also. Reuniclus confused me for the longest time too. When pronounced properly, they all sound alright, but we'll call these challenging names. I suppose Arceus would fit here too. I actually have a whole video about how to pronounce it. There's controversy, and history, and multiple official pronunciations just to make things terrible. Druid? Dredgagon? Druidagon. Like, okay, end of the name. It's a dragon. Is it also a druid? No? It drudges. Drudge, drudge, dragon. Drudge, dig, mmm. Dragalgi. 
Dragalgy? Fine in concept, I just don't like the sound of it. Nihileggio. Nihilego? Uh, at least the Ultra Beasts are like interdimensional aliens, so having them have weird, hard to pronounce names is sort of the point. Hence, Blacephalon, Nagonadel, Guzzlord. Guzzlord is super dumb, though. It's supposed to be like a big mecha black hole super villain trash compactor. But then it, it gets the name Guzzlord. Like, ah, oh, it's the Lord of Guzzling. That's inappropriate. It just doesn't sound cool or intimidating enough, like other intimidating villain Pokemon names. Melamar, Eternatus, Eveltal, and Guzzlord. <laughs> Like, it, it doesn't fit. Speaking of not fitting, Feraligator and Victory Bell. Their names are just kind of irritating because of how they are spelled at the end, but there's a reason for that. Originally, Pokemon names could only be 10 characters long, and if they were going to be spelled right, they'd have 11. So some sacrifices had to be made, and they wouldn't dare fix them in later games. Pokemon fans hate change of any kind. Now, how about names that do the opposite of the first ones we were talking about? Names that don't really help us understand the Mon, like, at all. Like, Brion. I swear, is it Brion? I would hate if it was Brioni. But what the heck is a Brion? Brine is not exactly a common word among kids, and neither is Undyne or Undine. It's a kind of mermaid. Having Pokemon with more advanced words as the basis of their names is fine, but it does feel odd on a starter Pokemon line. Meowstick. That sounds like a product you buy for your cat. What does Meowstick have to do with glow sticks? Oh, it's a mystic that meows. Okay, actually, that's a really good name. Lots of legendary Pokemon fit here too, like Palkia, Zacian, Xerneas, Kyurem. Would a kid know what any of these root words mean? Though if any Pokemon are going to have more mysterious name origins and pull from old languages, legendaries and mythicals make the most sense. So I actually don't fault them for it. If anything, it's actually cooler this way. So long as it still sounds good. Sounding good excuses a lot of the other things, like not being super creative. Beedrill is literally two words related to what it is next to each other. It's a bee, and it's got these drills. It's bee drill. But it's not exactly a portmanteau, and it's not exactly genius of a name, but it still rolls off the tongue really well. The vowel sound that B ends with doesn't clash with the hard D of drill. Bee drill. And then Impidimp. It's dimpy. Its name sounds like an insult, and that's very fitting of it. Plus, it's really fun to say. Impidimp. Impidimp, 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 Impidimp. Grim Snarl, though. Uh, it's a shame it eventually turns into this. It's Grim, and it snarls. And that name doesn't even sound good, but it's not terrible, I guess. But Sableye sounds fine, probably because the words do mix a tiny bit. Sable ends with an E, and I starts with an E, and they sound fine together. Plus, it has Sable's four eyes, so it works well enough. Frostmoth is also just kind of two words next to each other, but at least they removed the T, but that somehow makes it worse, actually. Frostmoth. It sounds not at all like the light, delicate, pretty thing that it is. It sounds so forced. But at least it's not Talonflame. <laughs> Talonflame is by far my least favorite name in Pokemon. A shame too, because the Pokemon itself is plenty cool. I would have much preferred if the worst name was given to like, Babaracle, which admittedly isn't that great of a name, but it's a heck of a lot better than Talonflame. It has Talons and it's fire type, and we couldn't come up with a pun or portmanteau, so we just stuck these two words next to each other, and they don't even sound good next to each other. It sounds like a bad warrior's cat OC. It's cheesy and doesn't fit Pokemon. And what sucks even more is that the Japanese name works beautifully in English too. Fiero. It evolves from Fletchling and Fletchinder, who are named that because of feather fletching on arrows, and so then it becomes a full-on arrow! Sharp weapons! Ultimately, though, they decided to go with Talonflame. They couldn't stick with Fiero because that name is too close to Firo, another bird Pokémon. <sighs> But that didn't stop Cub Fu from happening after Cub Chu. Well, here's another one that might make people mad. I do not like the name Incineroar. It has been growing on me, admittedly, though probably just because it's one of my mains in Smash Bros. And don't get me wrong, not a furry, but I love him and the way he looks. He's got such good personality. I just wish Incineroar had a name that sounded 
good? Incineroar. It is, it's got a roar that incinerates things, except all of its fire attacks come from its belt. Neither of these words have anything to do with wrestling either, or that it's a cat or tiger specifically. I remember when its art was leaked and the fan name was Bel Tigre, and that's so much better! Its fire comes from its belt, and El Tigre, Spanish for the tiger. And Mexico is super into their luchadors and fake wrestling, which is what Incineroar is. It's a fake heel wrestler, specifically. Ah, I feel like that name was probably just avoided because of copyright reasons, because of another cartoon called El Tigre. Ah, oh, but yeah, I don't like Incineroar. But remember, this is all opinion. Feel free to disagree, and tell me that you disagree in the comments, please, as well as what other Pokemon have not-so-good names, because there are plenty that I didn't mention, like the Kling Kling line, Licky Licky, Simiport. Oh man, such a miss! opportunity. The other wise monkeys all use an S word in the second part of their name. You got Pansage, Simisage, Panseer, Simiseer. So why not Pansoak, Simisoak? The heck is with Simipore? More like Simipoo.